Have you ever wondered if you should repackage some of the things you purchase in Mylar bags? Let's talk about it. Hey, Provident Preppers, I'm Kyleen. And I'm Jonathan. Today we're talking about Mylar bags, what they can do and what they can't do. Now, they certainly do a good job of protecting our food from light, oxygen, odors, and moisture. And so why wouldn't I package everything in Mylar? Well, for one thing, it's expensive and it takes extra labor. And sometimes there just really isn't a benefit. Now, before we get go any further, I wanna talk about Mylar itself for just a second. It's super important that you purchase your Mylar bags from a quality manufacturer. So we would recommend Wallaby Bags. They're a really good company. We don't have any issues with the bags that we've had from them and we use them a lot. Okay, and first of all, it's not a magic bullet, right? You don't have this magic wand that says, oh, I can take this food and suddenly it's going to be good for 25 or 30 years. What the Mylar bag does is it creates an environment to help whatever product dry good it is to be able to obtain the longest quality shelf life possible for that product. So let's talk about why would you want to repackage it? Are you trying to extend the shelf life? Do you want to protect it from moisture or are you trying to protect it from light or maybe a combination? Those things need to be taken into consideration. But the first thing we want to do now is to show you some examples of things that we would and we wouldn't repackage. Now, John, should I store my sugar like this? Um, this is probably not the best because it is a paper bag. It will absorb moisture. It will over time um, degrade. So yeah, probably for short term use, that's, that's probably okay to have a little bit for short term, but you don't want to, to extend that. So sugar is hygroscopic, which means that it likes to absorb moisture, right? And so if you store this bag for very long, um, the sugar, which has an indefinite forever never goes bad shelf life, can go bad. And so in this case, you really want to repackage it if you're gonna not use it up right away, right? Make sure that you do not use an oxygen absorber. Oxygen absorbers are fantastic for dry goods that are 10% moisture or less, and that are low in fats. That's ideal candidates for long-term storage. But with the sugar, it will turn it hard as a rock. It'll also turn salt hard as a rock. Now let's talk about salt for a second. If I've purchased the salt in a container like this, I'm not gonna repackage it. Putting it in Mylar would make it so that this would last pretty much forever, but it'll stay good on the shelf for five, 10 years, just like this, if it's in a dry place. So do you need the added expense of Mylar for this? How soon are you gonna use it up? Things like cornmeal, this cornmeal is a great candidate to put in a Mylar bag unless I'm planning on using it within six months and then I just leave it in here. When you store um, cornmeal, I could dump it straight into this Mylar bag, but I actually like to put the entire package inside the Mylar bag and just cut a little slit in here, stick the oxygen absorber in there, put it in the Mylar, and then heat seal this Mylar shut. And that's another good point that if this isn't heat sealed, this zip that's here, it's not gonna protect it all from air. It reduces it but, it, but there's no way you have an airtight seal unless you have heat sealed this. And you can use either a flat iron, like what you curl your hair with, or um, Wallabies has an impulse sealer now, and um, that's good to have around if you do a lot of it. So other items, John, why don't you talk about this wheat and Rob and Amanda's question. Okay, we did have a question that came up about, should we repackage this in Mylar? So we bought it packaged for long-term storage and Rob and Amanda had purchased wheat from Costco that right. was packaged for long-term storage, but not in a Mylar bag. But in this case, these buckets have a good seal. Now, as we know, plastic is somewhat permeable, but it's not going to be, it's not extremely permeable. So over time, you will have a, a little bit of oxygen migration in, but the bugs have already been taken care of. And so that's not an issue. Um, this is not something that I would probably try and store for 30 years. 10, 15, 20 years is probably a reasonable amount of time and just leaving it in this bucket. I would not want with everything that we have going on in our lives to be repackaging all of these into Mylar bags. So if I were to put one of the big Mylar bags, the big five gallon Mylar bags inside of here, I like dump out the wheat and, and then put the Mylar bag in 
and heat seal it and repackage it, you are looking closer to 30 years. If you are just setting that weed aside in case the end of the world comes and you don't want to look at it and you don't want to rotate it, that might be a good option. But like for us, we know this is going to be good for 20 years or so, at yeah. least just like this. So we're not going to repackage it. Now, if I had purchased the wheat or um, rice or beans, any of these long-term storage items from the store and left it like this, this is only going to be good on the shelf for a year, maybe two years, depending on the environment you store it in. The beans are going to end up turning really hard. But if I were to repackage this in mylar with an oxygen absorber, suddenly I've extended that shelf life to like 25 years or so. So that would make sense if I'm doing it for long-term storage. But if I bought this bag of rice and I'm planning to use it in a few weeks or within a month, I'm not going to repackage it. We do have our gamma seal lids and we put things like short-term rice, short-term beans, um, short-term wheat, sugar, all these things we have in our pantry. And, and that's a great way to use them. We don't have any issues with them going bad. Now, some things that are packaged by the store, it just makes sense to leave them. For instance, baking powder. Baking powder actually has a short shelf life. I know that there are people out there that say that baking powder can be stored indefinitely. Well, sort of, it's not gonna hurt you, but it loses its leavening ability, its ability to rise, which is the whole reason why you use it. So I wouldn't change it from this because I'm not gonna store this longer than five, maybe 10 years. That's really pushing it. But um, I'm, I'm just not gonna store it that long. Now, baking soda is a whole different animal because baking soda will store indefinitely. So I might end up repackaging that. So a lot of this comes down to rotation. Yeah, oh yeah. That's, oh yeah. That's what a lot of this comes down to. If you're gonna rotate through this in two years, which we would encourage you to rotate, our, our goal is not to put all this stuff away for, for 20 or 30 years, but most of this should we be rotated on some kind of schedule. Right. And okay, and he's talking about rotation, which is super important, but this, it doesn't matter because no matter what you do, it's gonna lose its leavening power. Right. So you, this isn't going to do it any better putting it in mylar. Pectin, so you've got about two years with pectin. And then what happens is that it loses its ability to gel slowly, right? The older it is, the less gelling ability it has. So would I put this in a mylar bag and then suddenly it magically will gel for 20 years? No, it's, it's not going to because the life of the product is short. So it's not gonna do me any good to do that. Same thing like soy flour. A lot of flours are like this, but especially soy flour. I would store the soy beans in mylar and then grind them. But this soy flour has a really short shelf life and it's not gonna magically increase because I put it in mylar. Now, you have something like these are little unflavored gelatin um, bags. And these actually have a an indefinite shelf life. Like these will last forever but they won't in these packages. So for me, what I do is I would just take these packages out if I wanted to store them long-term, put them in a Mylar bag, right? Um, and that would extend the quality shelf life for a long time. Powdered milk. This powdered milk comes in these little plasticish and Mylar-ish bags. But um, now you could like dump this into a Mylar bag but I, I wouldn't if it's, unless you're buying it in bulk, if you're buying it in bulk, you can do that. But I would, these are super thin. So if you wanted to extend the shelf life of this, I probably would put the entire packages inside of this Mylar bag to provide environmental protection because these, these you know, they, they don't feel like they're gonna protect it for a long time. One of the things that we did, um, and okay, we just want you to get thinking about this, right? I hope that I'm making this really clear. But you see all this stuff that's behind us? So we bought this to go inside of a grab and go food kit that's supposed to last for a couple weeks, right? And we're gonna do a video later on that. But um, as we're looking at different things to do, because you can pay two and $300 for a bucket of food that somebody else has put together that mm, it says it has a 25 year shelf life, but sometimes it does or it doesn't. We have a bucket here with a gamma steel lid. And the lid is gonna be hammered down in here, but the, the goal of this, the, these twist lids, is just that you can get them off. And actually, Wallaby makes some really cool ones now. Um, but we wanted to build 
a food supply just in here that we could just grab and go, kind of like the buckets of food storage that you purchase that are $200 and $300 a piece, but are filled with a lot of the foods that um, I personally can't eat. So we're gonna do a video on that later, but if you look at all these foods that are back here, some of the candidates, like beef jerky like this, this actually has an oxygen absorber. It's not a desiccant packet. It's an oxygen absorber that's in here. But this shelf life that, that's on here says about two years. So if I were to put all of these food in this bucket and then rotate it out within two years, just take it all out, put it in my pantry and use it in my regular food supply, there's absolutely no need for me to repackage this and spend that expense at all. Um, if I wanted to extend the shelf life and I want it to, to last for a really long time, I'm gonna have to be really careful about what ingredients are inside of that. Some of these might store really well for a long time and some of them won't, um, depending on the ingredients. Remember, fats go rancid in storage and so a lot of these have a lot of oils added to them and they totally will go rancid. Now, would they be great for a grab and go kit? Absolutely. And if you eat these in your regular life, then you're not wasting any additional money on, on repackaging it. Um, some of the things that I put in my kit will be stored in Mylar because like the oatmeal that I'm going to get now, we bought this one for this kit, but I'm not going to repackage this in Mylar because it has some ingredients in it that aren't going to last really long. But the oatmeal that I'm going to do in Mylar is just going to be oats, salt, and then some freeze dried fruit, which will has a really long shelf life. So that makes sense. I wouldn't have to rotate that very often because all of those are stable and could have a 25 year shelf life. So you have to be really careful about checking those ingredients and making sure that it makes sense financially and just time-wise, whether or not you're gonna package it in Mylar. So I hope that that was clear as mud. What do you think? Was yeah, it clear I, as mud? Hopefully so, and, and you can ask questions if, if it is clear as mud. <laughs> Shoot, the question's <laughs> over, but... Uh... Mylar protects from moisture. It protects the food from odor. It protects the food from light. And of course, oxygen. It protects it from air and keeping food um, away from the air and preventing oxidation will definitely help extend the shelf life. But you've got to remember that food has to be dry for an oxygen absorber, 10% moisture or less. Um, in the comments or in the description of this video, I'll leave a link to a site where you can look up the moisture content of many foods. Remember with Mylar, it does need to have secondary protection. So in some kind of a tub or tote or metal can or something in a bucket, something that will keep rodents if hopefully you don't have rodents but if if you were to get a rodent you don't want that food compromised yeah so now for the question of the day what foods do you store mylar in and what experiences what great stories do you have to tell us about your successes or your failures comment below and thanks for being part of the solution